So uh, here, here we go. This is how it happened. This was about uh, uh, Tet, of, just before Tet of 1968, up in a place called Song Bay in Vietnam. It's just uh, north and west of, of, uh, of uh, uh, Saigon. <coughs> so we'd been operating up there. I had never, we'd gotten in country, but I hadn't been in combat yet. We'd been, finished our training, now we were in the real deal, in the bushes, in a rubber tree plantation area, and a farming community. And uh, the combat kind of snuck up on us. We got a call that there was some uh, intelligence, that there was some enemy troops in the area, in this one particular place, and we were to go out there and investigate. Well, we're cavalry, that's what we do. We have seven armored personnel carriers, and we just move out, uh, and got in this field, in this big old empty field, uh, bushes about knee high or, or ass high, uh, more grass than bushes. And uh, as we come into this thing, as we're rolling across it, just slowly kind of reconnoitering, uh, all the tracks are, you know, side by side. And uh, I'm in the turret with a 50 caliber. Uh, my unit was 2-2, I believe, at the time. I can't remember. But uh, anyway, uh, one of the guys in my gunner hollers, Jesus Christ, there's one right next to us. And I look over, and there's this enemy soldier running all hunched over, and he's carrying a machine gun. And he's running using our track for cover. And I hit almost the same time I hear on the radio, there's one right next to you. Who too, there's one right next to you. So now he's so close we can't shoot him, and he's right next to us so other people can't shoot him. Well, they could. Our armor was strong enough, but there's re real risk of hitting somebody, you know. So now I'm in a hell of a fix. What do I do with this guy? You know, all of a sudden the shit hits the fan. This guy was an, an outpost. He got kind of caught off by himself. And all of a sudden, you know, as we came rolling in, he's trying to get back to his buddies. So uh, uh, somebody leans over the side of the track with an M16 and just blasted the shit out of this guy, shot him through his back. And they put like eight rounds in him and didn't even slow him down. And I saw the dust coming up off his back as those bullets hit him. And I was like, holy shit, the, our M16, well, you're so close of range and the M16 bullet is so tiny, there's no mass, it's very fast round and there's no mass, no passing of energy into the target. Now, of course he was doomed, he was gonna die later uh, he was shot to pieces inside, but he didn't know that at the time. And he didn't go down, and he just kept running. And I was, by this time, I was busy. I got another call. There's a, a track on my right. It's got enemy uh, in, in their sights. And this guy runs off in the bushes, and my left side gunner opened up on him. And, uh, damn, if that guy didn't lay down, turn his machine gun around and fire on us. That's how worthless. That was my first experience with the M16. I was so stunned that the M16 did not shoot that guy down. So anyway, uh, the action starts. And boy, is it hot and heavy. We took the track on the far right, Sergeant Baker's track took uh, an RPG right in the top right corner. And uh, kind of shrapnel and shit flew up and hit them, superficially wounded them. And, uh, but they're under fire. The enemy's all over the place. All of a sudden, that's how it happened. And I see these guys, this kind of movement off in this little low scrub brush line on the far side of the field, which was probably, I don't know, 100 meters away, 75 meters. It was pretty close for a 50 caliber anyway. And man, I opened up and, and everybody else opened up and just the shooting starts and it's just everywhere. So anyway, the, the firefight ends and uh, the enemy is disappeared. They, their orders apparently were not to stay engaged because I think they had enough people, as we found out several days later, a couple of days later, when Tet really hit, they did have enough people, but they just weren't prepared to engage us. We kind of caught them by surprise. So we're in this big empty field and unbeknownst to me, the field is on fire down on the far right and tracers hit the ground, they tumble and they just lay there burning, they light things on fire. So I didn't, you know, it's one thing to kill. I, I figured I'd probably hurt some people. I'd probably blasted a few guys off in the bushes. 
but here comes uh, uh, the surprise to me. It's you know, it's one thing to shoot at a long range and you see people fall and you shoot them. You, they're just silhouettes. They're, you can't make out any detail. They're just targets. Well, uh, we had some infantry guys working with us, uh, dismounted cavalry, and uh, they're out there policing up the battlefield, getting weapons and stuff off these dead guys. And uh, they come, they come walking toward my track, and they're dragging a body behind them. They get this guy by the by the feet, by the boots. He was fully uniformed soldier, uh, enemy soldier, NVA, North Vietnamese Army. And they, two guys, and each one got him under the arm, you know, a little bit, his foot, and they're dragging him backwards. And behind him, I see this this undulating mass uh, going over the top of the grass as they're dragging him through the grass. And it's a black, streaky, you know, looking thing. I thought, what the hell is that? And they parked this guy right next to my track. And I looked down, and there's this long blood trail, you know. Up from it. Well, that mass, that black mass, as they get closer, I realize it's this guy's hair. And he had long, kind of shoulder-length hair, and his whole head had been blasted out from under his scalp. And that flap of hair and mass had come undone and it's dragging along the grass. There's no head under that hair.